What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. This is Invest 91L, currently in impacting Trinidad and Tobago, as well as Grenada, um, as well as parts of Venezuela as well. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the latest uh, from, the, from the National Hurricane Center. Still an 80% chance of formation in the next five days. This is their latest adv advisory. A broad area of low pressure located near the uh, southern Windward Islands continues to proceed a large area sorry produce a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms radar imagery from Barbados and satellite observations indicate that the system has not become any better def uh, organized since yesterday however up level winds are forecast to become more conducive for development and a tropical depression is likely to form over the next several days as the system remains over water uh, while moving generally westward around 15 miles per hour over the southeastern and southern Caribbean Sea it is current we are currently ha have hurricane hunters en route to investigate investigate and this at 7 in the morning or 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We can go ahead and uh, pull that up for you. We can go ahead and show what's going on. We have the er her aircraft recon uh, going in. This is the uh, what we have right here. We have some flight level winds around, if we take a look at it, we have flight level winds now around 40 knots right there. Um, the SFMRs are kind of wonky, so we're not going to really rely on those. So We'll have to continue to keep an eye on it. What they're looking on uh, for right now is a closed circulation or if a circulation is closing at the lower level. So yeah, a, a standard procedure right there. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you what's fueling this thing. But before we do, this path right here is kind of reminds me of Hurricane Felix back in 2007 because the path of Felix was uh, moved through the southern Windward Islands, moved just north of the ABC Islands. And throughout the way, it's the ocean heat content and low wind shear for, allowed it to rapidly intensify to the monster it was, and then made landfall in Nicaragua as a Category 5 hurricane. I'm not saying this is go, uh, going to happen or anything like that, but the path does look eerily similar to that of Hurricane F uh, Felix back in 2007. So it's uh, something to note as we continue to move uh, through the Caribbean Sea right there. And, Considering the global sea temperatures, which are at 28 to 30 degrees Celsius for throughout its entire track right there, that's, that's something uh, to uh, keep an eye on. If And that's something to be a little bit concerned about if you're in the ABC Islands, northern Venezuela, Colombia, and, and parts of Nicaragua and Honduras right there as we continue to move on. The ocean heat content especially uh, gets pretty crazy at once we move into the Carib further into the Caribbean. Or we start to move into around 50, uh, actually up to 100 uh, OHC as we move past the Windward Islands, as we move past Trinidad and Tobago. It eventually goes down to around 75 OHC, and then it jumps back up to 100 uh, to 125, maybe 150 in some areas right there. So yeah, definitely something to pay attention to as time continues to go on. And that ocean heat content can be rocket fuel for uh, for development of hurricanes. We all saw that with Hurricane Ian just a couple of weeks ago, ago, where it moved through a very large area of ocean heat content and it rapidly intensified as a result of that. So yeah, definitely something we need to keep an eye on. We're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear. The wind shear isn't the best in the, uh, in the north part of the system. But once we move into the Caribbean, it'll be much better uh, for it. It'll be much healthier, and the system uh, will end up starting to develop as a result. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you the track models and the intensity. Once again, the track models remind me of a little bit of Hurricane Felix back in 2007, although some of them have it moving a little bit further down to the south than Felix. Something to keep an eye on, because if it keeps hugging the coast like this, it will probably not develop uh, very quickly. But if it kind of moves even 20 miles to the no uh, to the north and, it, and has this northern track like some of these models do, uh, do have it going, it definitely can develop. It, uh, the it, convection won't hug the coast as much, and it can definitely use that, uh, use that to develop and organize. The intensity models, once again, are pretty interesting right here. We have... A lot. We have quite a few models of, of this having a major hurricane strength. The majority of models continue to call for this thing being a hurricane uh, right there, including the H Wharf, which goes up to Category 2, uh, two strength by the, by the time it makes landfall in Nicaragua. So definitely something we need to keep an eye on as time continues to go on. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you some of the model runs. We're going to go ahead and show you the HMON first, uh, as we always do. The HMON run... Pretty, a uh, pretty interesting procedure right there. The HMON has this thing developing, organizing. This thing moves uh, out to the fr uh, moves uh, through Venezuela for some uh, for some uh, forsaken reason. That's way far to the uh, south. So I'm not. I don't think this is going to happen. It's definitely going to be close to Venezuela and the ABC Islands, but it's not going to be this south. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that. 
But as this uh, moves off of Colombia, this thing starts organizing. It eventually has it making landfall as a strong tropical storm in Nicaragua, according to the latest model run right there. But if you take a look at the track, it just moves through Venezuela and Colombia and then does that. Uh, tr typically, tropical systems don't do that. So I'm disregarding the HMON run for this time. We're going to go ahead and show you the CM uh, CMC run as well, just to show you what, uh, what we're talking about. The CMC, uh, we continue this thing. This thing also is moving through this. Yeah, this isn't. that's not going to happen. The GFS system, uh, basically, we uh, this thing uh, continues to uh, basically, yeah. I'm not sure what these runs are picking up on, but do not trust these runs. These are these runs are absolutely garbage for the first couple of days because it hasn't moving deep into Venezuela. That's not going to happen. So yeah, the, the next thing we're gonna go ahead and show you is the H wharf right there. And even though the H wharf is uh, can be pretty aggressive, it's the only uh, model that actually. Uh, works and has a decent path when it comes to this. So you can see the H wharf. It's taking a little bit, uh, a little bit slow. Taking a little bit slower to organize and develop. Um, it's still a, likely an investor tropical depression as it's uh, moving through the ABC Islands. But then it starts to organize into a tropical storm. Eventually, it reaches hurricane strength right there. The pressure, uh, the pressure goes down to 972. Makes landfall around Category Two strength in Nicaragua, northeastern Nicaragua, right there. Kind of starts moving through Central America, and that's pretty much the last we will hear of uh, that. Uh, the tracks, once again, similar to that of Hurricane Felix. Intensity, we're not entirely sure what's going to happen, so we will update you guys here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out, helps me make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. So with that being said, have a wonderful day. Stay safe.